Hey guys, it's Jeremiah, Stone Blue Airlines. We're back again today. We're gonna be doing some more build tips with Matt. I uh, hope you're enjoying this series and just some short tips on great ways to build an EPP. Uh, we really love EPP, it's extremely durable, but there definitely are some techniques uh, when putting an aircraft together that will definitely help you get a better build. So we're gonna turn things over to Matt. Matt's gonna talk to us about laminating. This is a custom build that's being done and uh, we're gonna put some final touches on this and one of the big pieces is putting the laminate down. And I'm just gonna roughly cut this at 20 inches. This self-healing cutting mat makes it really easy to cut nice straight lines because you've got the guidelines on the bottom of the mat. And now we're stocking one in the store too, just for that purpose. Or we're also stocking laminate. Yeah, we just brought in the five mil lamb that we use here in the custom shop. So we've got that available in the store now. And it's great, you can work it on uh, pretty much anything. Uh, this stuff, you get a lot of static electricity built up, especially if you pull it off a roll like I did. Um, and you want it to be clean when you lay it down. Uh, so, one way that you get that off is you can go ahead and blow it and like, you don't need to show all that, but it's, it's actually a pain if you try to rub the stuff off, it actually builds up more of an electrical shock. Now there's not grain like working with wood when you're dealing with laminate, but there is what? Well, there is a side. Take a look at this. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can see it on the back of my, my hand. You see how there's an opaqueness to the laminate. Now there's one side that's opaque, and the other side, I'll put my hand under it again. You see how this is a gloss, how it's kind of shiny? All right, the opaqueness itself, that's the adhesive. You always want the opaque side down, glossy side up. Okay, I have my laminate where I want it. I have it placed uh, where I want the edges to fall. Now, when you're doing laminate, you see, um, if you want your plane to look really sharp, you want this, as many seams of the laminate as possible to be going in the direction of the wind flow. So it keeps everything you know, going from front to back. If you put your laminate on and you have a lot of horizontal seams and everything, it really kind of breaks up that, that, that motion that you want to convey even when it's standing still. So I have it down, and you notice I don't have it all trimmed out now. Um, we're gonna trim it later, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up just one section and you see I'm keeping it straight. You want a nice straight line and I'm terminating right before I hit the EPP. Now if you're using an iron like this, which you can get this at any of the hobby uh, shops or any of the websites for, this is a, a, a laminating iron for like monocoat or ultra coat or something like that. Works great for this EPP. Um, but when you're doing this process, it's nice to have this, this anchor line. You have a nice straight line, stop it there because our aim with this is to work out any potential wrinkles. And the real point of showing you this tutorial is, especially on the edges and everything, we want them finished off nice. There's a way that you can do it, it's really simple, but there is a technique. Okay, now, uh, laminate is unlike monocoat and ultra coat in that you want a little bit overlapping. Because of the nature of the EPP foam, it flexes and, um, you know, there's just a little bit more movement, especially when Jeremiah crashes. We want to we want to have something built in there for the flex. That's never happened. No, never. So what I'm doing right now is after I have my my anchor line and and the laminate is anchored down all nicely and it's keeping it from moving, I'm trimming the edges of my laminate, and it's it's not you know I'm I'm giving a guesstimate here. I would say maybe a half an inch. Um, half an inch of trimming just to overlap on the top side. I'm gonna go, go over here and now I'm not gonna waste all this extra laminate. I'm, act, I'm gonna use that later on. But again here, about the same, I'm giving a little bit more on the leading edges because uh, I'm using five mil laminate and what that's gonna do is because the leading edge of the wing is usually the first to the crash, um, it gives it 10 mil protection on that. So just, you know, that's that extra armor. Okay, now here's the trick to keeping wrinkles out of your uh, your laminating job. Um, 
I'm putting a little bit of tension on the back edge and I'm pulling it a little bit taut. Not, I'm not stretching the tar out of it. You see there, it's not, you can actually make wrinkle lines by stretching it too hard. All I'm doing is controlling um, the laminate to make sure that it's laying flat. I'm not having to pull it and stretch it, I'm just milling it flat. So you see here, um, you should be able to see the reflection on there, just how smooth that is. Okay, that's not by pulling it real hard or anything, it's just making sure there's tension on it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip over about half an inch, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing, see? And I'm, I'm gonna keep working my way along, leaving about a half an inch gap in there. Now, the reason that I do that is if you were just to, to start working your way down, it, it pushes the laminate at the end to where you have bunches, and that's where you wind up getting your wrinkles. But if you do it this way, um, it leaves um, some of that tension right there in the middle. You can see how it's kind of wavy. There's still, there's still some waves in there. And it, it, it spreads it out and it evens it out so you're not left with a bunch of it at the end. But here's the deal. Since you have both sides anchored, well then, what it's doing is it's pulling itself taut and when you heat it up, the laminate will actually stretch itself anchored at both sides. So when you get done with this seam, it's mirror smooth. I mean, it's just, it's glassy, it's beautiful, I like it. And guys, pay attention to how Matt's working the iron on the top of the laminate. This is really key. I get questions about, well, it's starting to bubble and it really is an art. I mean, you, you need to take your time and kind of figure it out. If you're using too much heat, leaving in one spot, you're gonna get bubbling. You're gonna not only heat the laminate, you're gonna also start heating the EPP and you can start melting it. So I'm only doing about 250 degrees on this iron. There is, we don't ever usually let it sit very long. It's usually always moving. If it comes down, there's, there's always usually some motion to it. You can control the amount of heat being applied. Well, honestly too, if you're using paints on your EPP, like you should, because EPP takes paint really well. The longer you let your iron sit, the more you melt the EPP, and I'll show you something. Do you see the little, the little crevasses and stuff in there? Um, the paint fills in uh, differently, like on the walls. On the, on the walls, it's usually a little bit darker because, like with me, because you have these crevices in here, I paint two directions to make sure that I don't have one side lighter than the other. Well, the walls wind up collecting more paint than the bottom does. When you start to heat your EPP up too much, it melts the EPP and the paint pigments bunch together and you actually might get some color shifts that you're not intending to have if you wind up heating your EPP too hot. The edges, I have I have not gone all the way to the very edge because you'll melt that EPP on contact and on top of that you'll start to get gunk on top of your, um, on your uh, ironing surface. So then you'd have to clean that off when you go back to iron this again because it just, it's almost like an adhesive itself, it just, it just makes streaks. But what we're gonna talk about now is how you can actually make wonderful um, edges on the, on the laminate. You know, a lot of people, this is where they trip up. They'll have the, um, the crinkles and everything, but there's a real easy solution to that. Go along, it doesn't have to be measured out exactly, but flute the edges, okay? So where you get into a problem is when you're working on a whole edge trying to put it down, you wind up again with, you know, some creasing that goes on in the laminate itself. So let me finish this one. I'll flip the plane over and I'll show you how easy it is. Hey guys, there's a great build video that we did a while back here with Matt on the spark that goes over even just some more build techniques. The video is about an hour long, but we cover a lot of stuff from not only laminating to gluing and sparring. If you guys just want to see kind of a full complete build, we cover a lot of stuff in that too. So a lot of great tips. Yep. And now look here, I'm still doing that same practice of anchoring the, lam anchoring the laminate down. Now, uh, I say now a lot. Do I say now a lot? You do. I do, sorry. But anyway, the seam where the laminate is, I'm not touching that right off because what happens 
is be because of the the angle of the airfoil itself and all that there needs to be some overlap but what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize that overlap so by anchoring it down I've allowed the laminate to sit itself in place and slightly overlap each other and it's really imperceptible when you when you get it you know when you get it heated up and down now you've already done the top end uh, mm -hmm. or the top side I should say so this laminate is actually a double layer on that front leading edge yep again we have 10 mil protection on the leading edges and we're trying like with these planes I, I want them you know to be still rocking strong three years later after hard use so we're building tanks but we want to make them look good too well now that you know these tips laminating shouldn't be intimidating at all start on your project apply some of these basic tips to your plane and it's almost a guarantee it's gonna come out looking great. All right guys, thanks for watching, but uh, I still gotta spend some quality time on my airplane here, so yeah, come back anytime you want. Good.